So it's no secret, one of the best and most popular lighting uh, pieces of equipment out there is from Aperture, and it's their Aperture LS, their Lightstorm uh, C120D Mark II, or the original 120, and their C300, etc. And they're very popular because they are a very lightweight, portable light that you can use for both photography and videography, and it's a really great LED constant light. And if you can add some softbox to it or something, uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. But one of the biggest complaints out there, it's a complaint for a reason, is price. That can run for about $750, give or take US dollars. So it is a you know pretty piece of penny that you can invest in lighting and gear as an investment to get into. And I've used the lights, they are beautiful, they are well worth it if you can afford it. But the other thing out there is if you can afford it. And one of the biggest things I wanted to do for my channel and over the whole break and the craziness of 2020, I wanted to revamp things. And about a year ago or so, I really wanted to strive to get Kino Flow lights. You know, the four uh, four bowl bank lights. Kino Flow is a very reputable name, especially in the video industry. Uh, even Peter Hurley uses them for his headshots. I wanted to upgrade to something like them. And I wound up being able to use Kino Flow bulbs in my own kind of DIY thing. I'll leave that down below. While it was an upgrade from what I had before, I was still missing that soft, shadowy look. Just really what I wanted with an amazing softbox and everything. And my goal was to see what I could do. And Aperture was at the top of my list, but the problem was the price. And at this time, I can't afford to invest in that. But I did find an alternative, and that's the point of this review. It's the, it's the uh, Pixel Photovol C100, which is pretty much like the Aperture light. But I'm gonna give a couple options and why I didn't choose to go with them first. And for context, this light right now, 270 bucks US dollars. So a couple of the other known options that people have gone with are from Godox, there's especially two of them. So without going with the Aperture C120D, there's the Godox SL60, which is even cheaper than this, this uh, C100 light. But the problem was it does have a bad fan noise and there's videos of people hacking their way to making quieter fans, etc. I'm not doing all that. I, I don't want to. But once again, pretty decent, but you can hear the fan noise it, even when you're doing some video and I'm not having that. So I felt the investment was a bit more. The other thing was the Godox at VL150. Same thing. A lot of fan noise complaints and a couple quality issues that I've heard and, and saw in some reviews. So I didn't want to go with that either. A popular one that a lot of people didn't necessarily know about, but was out there, was the GVM, it's like great video something, ADW. And it, once again, equivalent kind of power, a little less, but it had heating issues. So it would overheat a lot, it wouldn't work, a couple units burn out. So while everything is a little bit under the price of this Pixel C100 and a lot under the aperture, this was the best one that I found. And one that not a ton of people talked about. And even if you search, it really, there's not a ton of people that talk about it that this light should be known. And it's really a great quality light with only a couple little flaws, which I'll cover. But let's talk about the Pixel Photovol C100. So like I said, this light is $270 and it is a very, very bright light. I will demonstrate and test with the softbox on and with it off. You can go from zero to 100. You don't get capped on it at all like some of the other LED lights out there. But yet again, it is a daylight balanced model. So it only shoots at 5,600 Kelvin. The weird thing is, so you do get a remote with this thing. The remote's kind of weird in a way, but on the remote, you can use this for multiple versions of this light. It's not just related to the C100, but the Pixel remote also has options where it looks like you could control the color temperature, go all the way down to 3,000 Kelvin instead of just uh, you know 5,600 which is daylight, uh, you know, compared to tungsten, but this doesn't change for that. So if you mess with this dial and you see you can change the color temperature, uh, it won't actually change on that. So just keep that in mind. This is a daylight 5,600 Kelvin balanced light. So natural, beautiful light that a lot of people in videography and photography use. And the light for the most part, it is built very well. It has aluminum alloy for the casing and some plastic. One of the biggest Things that I will say though, and it is a con that I'll touch upon a little bit later as well, is the uh, yoke to uh, you know to uh, to tighten it to tighten the friction for you know your tilt uh, of of your uh, LED light. It is plastic compared to what the aperture does, and that's might be another reason to, if you really want something fully secure, to pay over that seven hundred dollars to get that security. 
but the yoke isn't the best. You really have to crank that bad boy to get it sitting where you want, especially with a bigger softbox on it, which I'll show you. I have a 35 inch softbox that I'm using right now with it. Um, so it can get a little heavy, but if you crank it, it works, but just something to look out for. It's, it might eh, a little bit as you're shooting sometimes, but not terrible, but something to note. Another thing you'll notice as well is that it actually has a Bowens mount. So you'll be able to have a lot of older attachments and newer attachments that you'll be able to attach this bad boy right here. And what I use right now, as opposed to the Aperture Light Dome, if, I, if I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, for the price, that's like $200, $250 or something like that. I have a $140 option. It's a newer 35 inch um, softbox right here with the grid and everything. So you can you know, focus the light and condense it a little bit. Beautiful, well worth it. And the cool thing is, I don't know if you've ever tried to thread metal rods into an older like Bowens mount uh, to be able to connect, but it is terrible to do that. It is a horrible experience. It is very, very difficult. But with this one right here, with this newer softbox, it's great to use Bowens mount and you actually just snap them into place a little bit and it is super easy to use and makes this whole setup extremely less painful. But that's the one cool thing about this C100, just like the Aperture Light as well. You got a Bowens mount and you can use a lot of accessories with the mount. So as I noted at the start of this video, this light could become very, very bright from zero to 100. And luckily with the you know use of my wireless uh, remote, I could control the power directly from here. I will put on my sunglasses to show you just how bright, just for sake of you knowing, I'm shooting at f1.4 to get that uber duper bokeh in the background. ISO 160, 160th of a shutter. So let's put on some sunglasses. Let's go all the way down to, this is off right now, a little mysterious, but let's, let's pump it up. That's one, 15, let's go 25. We'll go 50. How's this looking? Oh, we're looking bright. Once again, I'm not changing any settings. We're at 60, 80%. Oh my God. Even with the softbox though, it's helping. And we'll jump up to 100%. Yep, very bright. And even a more B-roll, hold it against the white wall and you'll really see what it's like without that. But, um, but everything you get with this, it's very much worth it. It comes in a great case as well. It even comes with a reflector, so that way you can get, you know, a nice defined scoop of light if you want. It comes with both EU and American power cords. That way you can plug it into the wall however you want, even if you don't have a converter. And um, it has a secure connection for the power in the back where you plug it in and you need to kind of pull the plastic a little bit to um, alleviate it. So that way it's like, it's kind of like a anti-lock feature. It's like a lock feature so the plug doesn't just fall out. It does seem a little flimsy though, but I've never ever had an issue. So just something to keep in mind when you're using that, but it's more of a feature where you have to pull it out a little bit and then it'll disengage that way the cord stays safe. And it does have a nice bright screen on the back so that way you can you know, easily see what you're changing. It has a couple dials as well. So if you look to the right, you'll see uh, the power button. You just hold that in for a second or two and the light will pop on. The cool thing is it retains the last settings of whatever group you're in as well. So say you, I have this light at 30%, which should I have it on right now? It will remember that. So when I turn it off, as long as I'm in the same group, same channel, it will have that. So when I turn it back on, you don't have to go searching for, you know, exactly whatever you were looking for again. And above that is the dial to go from zero to 100 to adjust your brightness. So once again, works very well. Now there's a button in the middle. And once again, I went with this light because it's very quiet with a fan and you just don't hear it. I'll, I'll, I, I just don't hear it. And a lot of the other ones you do. So it does actually have a, so this is on manual mode technically for the fan. So it's it's a bit lower. Um, this handles heat very, very well, but there is an auto fan mode, which will auto engage maybe a little bit higher to have a little bit more cool dispersion. When you turn that on, you can hear it a bit. Um, and I'll even play that for you in a little bit of B-roll. But the thing is, it's still not even that loud, even if I have it right here, um, you know, right next to the camera. This light is no more than 12 inches away. I mean, it is very, very close to the camera to where I'm at as well. So very, very easy to use. This is manual fan off. Now, if you go down from the power button, you'll see a channel button. And what the channel button is, 
Uh, obviously you can direct to the, the channel you wanna go, but if you hold the channel button in, there are different scene flashing modes. Um, to my opinion, they're a bit gimmicky, but if you wanna use it for video, if you're simulating and there's a horror looking one where it's just a little bit of a flashing and there's a smaller strobe flash. And then if you go to like the, the third option, which you control through the uh, brightness dial, um, you have more like a scenic kind of look. So, well, I mean, if you really wanna see what they look like, we'll do it here. It's more like, oh no! And this one's just a little bit faster. You get a little bit more faster of a strobe, like I'm running, I don't have to do through a club or something like that. This one's more of a weaker one. Maybe you could simulate watching TV a bit or something like that. But this is just another, another version. And then you just long press that CH button again and you're back to normal. So you have a couple weird flashy type of modes which are not that usable in my opinion. But if you wanna use them for some video effect or something, maybe something in long exposure photography to get some cool effect, you can absolutely do so. And going from there, you have into the left, there's a, you see a plus minus symbol. And that really just jumps the light from zero or one to 25, 50, 75, 100, just in a quicker fashion. I don't know why you would ever need to do that just quickly, but that option is there. And to the left, you have the GP button, and that is your group. So that way, if you see um, on the back uh, of here, you have, you know, on the top of the, uh, of, the, of the light panel here, you have how bright it is. So, you know, 30, 40, 50%, whatever. You have the color temperature, which is 5,600 Kelvin. And then underneath A, B, C, D, E, F are your groups. And then to the right, you could change your channels. So that is really the light in total. This light, the C100, has a lot of amazing options and it is a very affordable version of the Aperture C120D for the most part. And But I, I will have to note some cons on this right here. And that is once again, the plastic yoke on the side to control the tilt of the light. It is something to note, it is not the most sturdiest thing in the entire world, but you could get the job done. Once again, I'm using a pretty heavy softbox on it. And for the most part, it does exactly what it needs. Just a little bit more tightening absolutely helps. The uh, the, prow the power prong, once again, it seems like a little loose. It's a little flimsy like, but I've never had an issue with it. But something to notate if you have it on, it's kind of like shaky a little bit. That's kind of what the locking mechanism is for. And then yet again, the remote being like half working with it, like yet again, if I turn the remote off, it doesn't turn the light off. I have to do both power on and off individually. Um, but yet again, you have some control over, you know, switching to the group or the, uh, you know, your, your brightness level and everything. But that's about it. You can't control everything with this remote, especially power it on and off, which is fine, I guess. But it's a remote. It should absolutely control that. And the one big thing that this light is definitely using, and once again, you're at a, what, $500 price difference for the most part, is that you can use the aperture light more or less outdoors with a portable battery pack on it. So you can actually attach a battery pack to it. I think a V battery or something, one of those big bulky batteries or an Anton Bauer, and you can be able to use the light portable. Where this, you're just stuck to regular plug-in power. So if you have that outside, awesome, then you can use this light. But if not, the aperture is something you'd wanna look into as you can have those options to portably, portably charge the light. And that's why a lot of people like to invest in that as well if they don't want something a bit more of a budget with great quality because you have that option and that capability. So into the video kind of went a little bit longer than I wanted, but I really wanted to cover a great option because I get questions about the lighting recently that I've had. And people noticed that as soon as I switched from the four bank Kino lights, they're not actually like the Kino fixtures and everything. I just kind of made a DIY one to these with a softer look and I got the more bokeh and everything. And that's what I changed. Uh, kind of like mid-summer, maybe June, I upgraded to the Pixel C100 uh, LED light and I absolutely love everything about it. It's very, very good. Once again, I've used the Aperture lights before. They are amazing as well. I just didn't feel like spending almost $800. I'd rather spend under $300 and get something very, very similar. But that's not to say Aperture is not worth it. They are as well. But this light, definitely worth taking a look into. But the Pixel... Photoval C100 is a great, great option for under $300. And to be able to put a softbox like this newer one on here as well, or anything with a Bowens mount is phenomenal.